family, distinguished guests and friends. I could not think of a better venue to talk about coats of arms than a knighting ceremony. And may I congratulate our soon-to-be knights as well. I have been asked to explain the markings on the coat of arms that decorates the entrance into the Castillo de San Marcos, that great coquina fortress that marks our city. Now, the coat of arms has been well worn from over 300 years of exposure to the elements, but it is still visible enough to be identified as the coat of arms of the autonomous kingdom of Castile and Leon. It was the official coat of arms of the Spanish royal family, but construction was begun on the Castillo in 1672. Now, coats of arms were used to distinguish different knights on a battlefield. Coats of arms were originally cloaks of cloth, used to cover the armor of a knight, and used as an identifier so one knight could tell friend from foe in the heat of battle. This cloak, or tabard as it was called, was usually white with the knight's particular identifier sewed on the back and front, usually an animal or some symbol associated with that individual knight they became known as charges. The coats of arms were also painted on the shields of the knights and was usually borne upon the left arm and emblazoned with the same charges. Hence, all coats of arms have a shield as part of the display. Now, to avoid any confusion, no two knights could use the same animal or symbol displayed in the same manner of another knight and thus heraldry the recording and keeping of these coats of arms was born. Strict laws were written to ensure the symbols were not displayed exactly the same by any other than the original knight. Background colors were also strictly recorded, and each color was said to represent a particular virtue. Now, family marriages between nobles have brought about a new set of rules for coats of arms. The left side of the shield uh, is the male side and it's called the dexter side while the right side was very reserved for the female side of the marriage and ladies i had nothing to do with this naming it's called the sinister side <laughs> in this case there was no sinister side for the coat of arms as both charges were selected by men now that's pretty much the history of coats of arms but i want to tell you particularly about the coat of arms above the entrance into the castillo the first coat of arms was simply a red lion rampant on a white shield. The creation of this coat of arms is attributed to King Alfonso VII, who became King of Castile and Leon in 1126. It was he who placed the lion on the coat of arms. The castle was attributed to his grandson, Alfonso VIII, in 1230, changing the coat of arms, moving the lion from the center to the right, and placing the castle on the left, thus making it an impaled shield, meaning divided in half vertically. Then came along King Ferdinand III, and sometime between 2030 and 1252, he united the two kingdoms and quartered the arms as a symbol of the union. And so if you look over towards the door of the church, you will see the coat of arms. Quartered means simply it's divided into four equal parts, and you'll see the first and fourth quadrants are the yellow of the castle, yellow in color, with three towers. Windows and doors are outlined in black. The third tower, or the three towers, indicates that it was a fortified castle and would be considered a fortress. In heraldry, castles are a sign of strength and protection. They are generally associated with landowners. Nobles wealthy enough to hold large pieces of land with a stone castle as the main residence. The fact that it is on a red background would indicate the connection with the military, such as that landowner raising an army to fight for the king. In this case, it was the king who chose the castle after his father, also a king, had chosen the lion for the coat of arms. The second and third quadrants are red lines standing rampant meaning it's erect, claws extended, and ready for battle, and draws its significance from the early Romans. At that time, the lion was associated with majesty and kingship. In later usage, the lion became emblematic of strength, 
courage, and generosity. Now the lion is awarded as a symbol or charge to a valiant knight who is said to have the heart and courage of a lion in battle and has distinguished himself as such many times on the battlefield. The red color could also be attributed to blood that was shed in those battles. This charge is not easily given and requires bravery and valor above and beyond what is expected of the normal knight. It is not given. It must be earned. The white color of the background would indicate peace and serenity. The lion is wearing a golden crown showing royal patronage or the bearer of this portion of the coat of arms is of royal blood or an actual ruler, a king or queen, as does the crown sitting atop the coat of arms. Today, the coat of arms is still seen mostly on flags, many of which we see flying from buildings all over town. But in the century since 1672, the coat of arms has changed a little. The yellow castle now has doors and windows of pale blue in deference to the French. And the lion is a darker color and on some coats of arms almost looks purple. Since then, that coat of arms is what is the coat of arms over the entrance into the Castillo de San Marcos. As most researchers will tell you, in doing research, there's always a side story. And during my research of this coat of arms, I discovered a copy of an old painting, oil painting, by the American neoclassic artist John Vanderlyn, showing Christopher Columbus his first landing in the New World on October the 12th of 1492. In the painting, he is standing on land holding a flag bearing the original Castile and Leon coat of arms used by King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella. Very interesting. The connection is still there. I would like to thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind attention. Thank you very much.